Hey everybody, we're gonna do um shit. I lost my we're gonna phone. do some shit. Some shit. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> Welcome back everybody, and we're gonna do a video response. The title of the video, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but you should go check it out. The title of the video is, Does Video Game Collecting Suck Now? At the end of the video, Rob Man says, for the viewers, I assume you want people to put it in the comments. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna do that. But we're special, <laughs> we're extra, extra. You're a little extra. I'm a little extra. So what he said is, what fuels your passion for video game collecting? And I wrote down a list of 10 things. I know, I was so super proud because usually that's my job to come up with the talking points and the list and uh, let us know if you think Scott's better at it. But he's not. So put in the comments I am and then send him a private message if you have him on social media or something. He won't read it, but you can send it. I feel like we're just getting bashed. What did I do today? <laughs> it's our anniversary today. It's our anniversary. She's crapping all it's over me. It's my <laughs> yes, that's what I that's what I woke up to this morning. It's my anniversary. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yes, happy anniversary. <laughs> Honestly, an uh, anniversary. You do the wedding for the woman. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> that's why I assumed it was mine. The wedding nights for the man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the way I wrote down my list of ten talking points is, I said, well, let's do it how we started our journey. Yeah. And our journey of collecting started about five years ago. Yeah, so he structured it that way so yep. that we were kind of going in a linear path from where we started to where we are now yep. and what the future holds, kind of. First and foremost, and I think everybody would agree with this, you get into collecting video games because of the nostalgia. Yeah, oh. you don't get into it because you want to be rich because for most collectors... <laughs> you're gonna <yeah>. go poor. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> The prices nowadays. Yes. So I always want it tons of games when I was growing up when I was a kid and if yeah. I got two games a year I that was, was a big good. year that's yeah that's a big year yeah normally Christmas and birthday yeah and that's it that was my main goal like I for all my collecting because I started collecting toys and then I started collecting comic books and now I'm collecting video games mm -hmm. and all the stuff I wanted when I was a kid this didn't really hit me because I wasn't as nostalgic for games. Because girls play with stupid dolls and play tea parties and knit and... What? And play hopscotch and skip rope and do makeup and have slumber parties and pillow fights and stuff like that. <laughs> You're getting way overboard. <laughs> totally what I did every night when I was 18. I'm like, <clears throat> let's have a slumber party and a pillow fight again. That's the way I picture it. <laughs> All right, moving on to number two. Basically, you started collecting for Alex, another, so you could share the passion with Alex. Another stage of the collecting was to get games that I wanted to play couch co-op with my son. Yeah. Double Dragon 2 mm -hmm. on the Nintendo, uh, Golden Axe 2 on the Sega Genesis, and Streets of Rage 2. I see a, a 2 here. There's a yeah, common theme here. This is number 2 and then there's 3. Yeah. Yeah. The first time you guys really, really gamed, it was up in our bedroom. Yep. on the TV, and he was jumping around Golden like a fool axe, and just having a blast. Yep. And another big highlight moment for me was the first time he played Duck Hunt. Oh, yeah. He was floored by the idea yeah. that he could shoot a light gun at a at TV. At a TV, and it just it blew, blew his mind. His mind. <laughs> like, Something what? that we took for granted. Yeah. You're like, oh, who plays Duck Hunt? Well, I'm yeah. going to play Mario. It came... You know, but you, you skipped it. You're like, whatever, you can only shoot so many ducks. And you can't, he, but... Shut up. And he I hope you show it. that clip of you not no, being able to shoot ducks. No. <laughs> never happened, never existed. But I mean, another part of that is you want to leave a legacy for them. I think yes. everybody wants to leave a legacy for their child, whether it be, you know, you, you have insurance and you're leaving them money or you want to leave them like... He'll think of me when he's having that big yard sale. <laughs> yeah. But it'll be cool to, when he has a child, yes, to start porting that collect collection over to him so they can share the same thing that you guys shared. Yeah. So number three, since you mentioned Duck Hunt, is playing physical media. Oh my god, yes. So you would not be able to play Duck Hunt if you didn't have that old original hardware, the CRT TV, the Nintendo, the light gun. I don't know what it is about putting in that cartridge into the NES. It's just... The best. 
it's just jamming that in there to all those fucking pins and getting Whoa. it to connect. But you know what I mean? Like it's that it's that clicking noise. It's turning the power on. It's every yeah. part of it. Uh, number four, finding games that we've never heard of before. And there are oh thousands. Oh my god, and there really? still are thousands. If you start going back and looking at the amount of games in each console's library, yeah, it's it's it blows your mind how many games there actually are, and then people only really ever hear of the ones that make it really mainstream. There, the big hits. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I'm always shocked by like I'm like, well, we're running out of games to collect. No, I don't think there'll ever be an end. No, <laughs> it's like iceberg. Your your knowledge is like the top of the iceberg, but there's so <laughs> much below the surface that we just don't have yet. We're gonna run out of room before we run out of possibilities no. for games. No. Yeah. No, yeah. No, yeah. No. Moving on. <laughs> Number five I have on the list as YouTube. And what I mean by YouTube mm -hmm. is after me and my son started gaming together and we started this little collection, he already had a little YouTube channel where he was play, basically playing Minecraft and all that other stuff I don't like. So, <laughs> and I said, well, why don't we have a YouTube channel together? Yeah. And the whole idea behind it was he was going to play games that I loved from my, yep. you know, from my past, and we would put them against games from his generation that he loved. And I think that's and what that confuses lasted, people yeah. all the time. They're like, I see retro sometimes, I never see any rivalry. And the rivalry part came from It was hitting supposed those... to be that. And it lasted about <laughs> two weeks, and then he got bored and left. <laughs> and we could have just went, Bleh. I guess we're done now. No. But I got roped into it, and... And I'm so thankful for it. It's yeah. it's become kind of my sanctuary too. I come down here and I escape by throwing myself into a game. Yeah. And so, I love it. I guess we'll go right into number six. Yep, number six. Now it's become a hobby for both of us. Yeah. And what I mean by that is we'll make a day of it. We usually go out on a Saturday. Yeah. And we'll spend like a good four or five hours, whether it's hitting up Yard sales, thrift stores, mm -hmm. uh, pawn shops, we'll go game hunting. Sometimes we'll plan a trip and we'll go to a different city yeah. overnight. And basically the main goal of it is to go check out places where we can find video games. Then also check out the local pubs and yeah. stuff there. Craft beer, bars. and Some of the funnest times we've gone <clears throat> game hunting were just like... There was no effort put behind it at all. It was like a typical Saturday. Like one yeah. of my favorite times was when we went down in the middle of nowhere to pick up some games and they kept telling us to turn left. And I'm like, we can't oh, turn left yeah. into the ocean. And we just have fun. Like we'll be laughing about nothing and everything and just having a blast yep. doing what people are like, you have fun with that? I Because yes, uh, we enjoy each other's company. I, I'm starting to think that you actually buy more games than I do now. <laughs> I know. Because we kept telling ourselves. I told her. I'm like, okay, we're going to plan a trip to St. John here in the end of the month. And uh, she said, okay, well, let's save up some money. All right. <laughs> let's save up money until then. Okay. Did that last? Okay. Okay. Who I sent, went to work. Who sent me pictures? Who sent me pictures? No, this is, you <laughs> already broke this vow. She, I said it was for my birthday. Oh, no, no, yeah. I said it was for my birthday. I, I, I left, went to work, and then on my break. So we're talking four hours after she, after she said it. She's like, um, I'm oh. an impulse buy. But I said it was for my birthday. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's for my birthday. So that doesn't count because it's a birthday present. All right. Right? Yeah. But you also sent me pictures. You're like, oh, look what the parlor has. And yeah. then how okay, that looked, that was And I know way. he wants it. <laughs> So then I freaking won't buy it because I want them to be happy. Most wives just want their husbands to be miserable. I want mine <laughs> to be happy. All right, moving on to number seven. And I kind of feel like this one pertains a little bit more to me. Who's on the socials? Who's on the socials? <laughs> I'm always say, talking to I'm you. I'm not very so social. No, I'm no. not saying that. I'm just saying I type faster, so I man the socials. That's what it is. That, that's exactly faster, what it is. is. Exactly what it is, but we're talking about community. Being because we got, community. yeah, because you got into the hobby. Yeah. To get into the YouTube channel, uh -huh. so that I wouldn't be by myself and mm -hmm. nobody would watch and mm -hmm. I'd cry. You decided you needed a gamer education because you really didn't play games yes. up until a couple of years ago, right? Yeah. 
so then you would reach out to other channel YouTube channels mm -hmm. some a lot of friends and some channels that were always commenting in our yeah. videos that yeah. yeah and we asked them to every month you would pick somebody and they would pick three games and you would you pick one most of the time sometimes sometimes more. all of them sometimes <laughs> all of them and then you would play those games yeah on, on their recommendations so from that we grew into a bigger community yeah and we got to meet more people we got to meet uh, retro wolf yeah and he nominated us for youtuber of the month yeah. And then we got to meet Gaming Out the Grid, and then it just keeps going. You get Pixel I know. Game Squad, you get Do you Nerd. And and you know what was killing me? Was you were watching some of these channels and never commenting. And I'm like, how do you build a community of gamers? And so, like... But I watch videos under my own private one. I know. And you're like, you gotta comment. How long? They don't know who I am. How long <laughs> had you been watching Pac-Man? Because he started before us. And you, oh, you wow. have been watching... Not right at the first, but very close to when he first started his channel. And yep. like, why aren't we ever saying hello? Oh. And Denver Gamer I was watching for Denver a Gamer, long time. yeah. But yeah, you have to build a community. Honestly, it makes it that much better. It, it makes it a lot better. Oh my god, it makes it so because much more fun. Now when we do a live stream, um, people in the chat will say, Well, guess what I found? I found yeah. this for you know five bucks and I'm like we're like holy crap and we're everybody's happy for them right? yeah. yeah and also we see the same people on all the time so I'm like this is this person that's his wife and they live here and they really like to like honestly it's friendships it's it's a community of gamers yep. because not everybody in your universe in your everyday life is going to love games as much as you do no so it's nice to be able to reach those people that yep. do Oh, yeah. Because I know... There's not many people that would have over a thousand games in there. No. Game room, right? No. Exactly. So number eight. I was debating on putting this on the list at all, but Happy Console Gamers video was inspired by the sale of the Mario 64 mm -hmm. game that sold for, I think, one and a half million. Yeah, the WADA. And that's what yeah. brought Three on eight. the whole video for does video game collecting suck now because everything's expensive right? yeah so i debated on it so I, I decided to put it on here because mm -hmm. and number eight is value and investment because there is a fair amount of value here you can calculate it on an app and it's investment because a lot of these games continue to rise yes it's just like investing in stocks except our stocks are fun so and we get to <laughs> yeah. use them and we get to enjoy them it gets me excited to pick out these games like, I'm in the past, just for instance, Black Sigil. Oh, I picked it up. And on the 3DS. On the 3DS. 3DS or DS? Uh, I think it's a... Might be a DS game. Might be a DS game. Yep. Anyways, it was 70 bucks, and we hummed and hawed, and Scott said, you know what? If you feel like it's worth it, get it. There's going to be games we add to the collection simply because of value. They may be traders towards something yeah, we want if more. It, if we look at it and like, well, they're selling it for, you know... 25% less of what it's actually valued at, and we think it's going to continue to go up, it might be a wise investment. It might be a wise investment, yeah. because it does. It you, There are going to be some games in the collection that we're going to go, when are we ever going to have the chance to get that? But maybe this is the way. Yeah. And that's what people do when they flip. They flip towards something they really want. Anyways, Black Sigil now is worth $212 or $220 Canadian like yeah. and I was like oh my god like I yeah it, like it was a, it was a good investment it doubled yeah. and then doubled some. in a year and a half yeah so which is pretty much any good game has like doubled mm -hmm. any retro game has like doubled at least here over the last five years yeah so if you're not at least a little bit thinking about the I investment think everybody just tickle, you can be tickled pink when you go down and you're like, I go and I pick up Silent Hill off I the mean, shelf that I paid $30 for. We were doing that with Retro ago. Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, we're comparing prices and like, oh, I got mine for this. And then, you get excited about it. Well, yeah. Like, you get excited about what, what you is, spent and what it's worth now. Yeah, you do. It's just, part of it. Number nine it goes a little bit along with, you know, the hobby it's created for us, but it's a thrill of the hunt. And it kind of goes with the last one, too. Like, you see something that yeah. you didn't expect to see for the price you see it for it yeah. it there's no better feeling now i know 
a lot of the collectors, and they have big collections already, but mm -hmm. they absolutely hate where the prices have gone. Yeah. And they're not as easy. And I can understand yeah. it would suck, but if it was easy, would then it be it, as fun? As exciting? As exciting? I mean, if it wasn't sought after, if the value wasn't there, I guarantee not even half the people would be collecting them. That's true. It wouldn't be as sought after. No. If it, it would be easy, I wouldn't. We wouldn't make a day of it. We wouldn't be taking trips. No, exactly. To other cities to see if we can find because games are hard. There's systems that are almost impossible to collect for where we are right now. Turbo Graphics 16. Turbo Graphics 16. <laughs> the Dreamcast. The Sega Saturn. Uh, there's not many PlayStation One games, at least not of the big heavy hitters. Yeah. Like there are some RPGs and stuff on there that are just impossible. astronomical in price, yeah. and you just don't see them around here, right? That's true. That thrill when you finally find oh, something yeah. you've been looking for for a while, you're just, and you just, you can't leave it. You get, oh, you're like, fuck, it's expensive, but I, I, I have I, to I have gotta it. get it. I've been looking for it for years. And yeah. There's games that I've been looking for for multiple years. Oh, yeah. So. And that are still on the list. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And I usually make a list every year of games I want, and there's, I could go back two years and. You make a list of games you want, <laughs> and then you modify your own list. I gotta deal with what I can find, Jen. I know. Yeah. See, I can't find all, all those time. ones. They're like they're a wish list. Doesn't mean you're gonna obtain them. It makes me feel like you want them. You're like, here's my list. Here's my list. Here's my list. Make it happen. Birthdays. <laughs> anniversaries. But that's why anniversary. <laughs> yeah. Last one on the list. Well, you're looking at it. Yeah. Last it's one on the, the list is is the game room, and I like. It, everything adds up. It's the nostalgia. It's the physical media. Yeah. We have our game set up so it's like art on the wall. Yeah. Um, I have it. Our, my game room's designed to entertain. You so know, it brings community four, into that. Four, five, six people in here can come in here easily. and game easily. Yeah. It, people will walk around and just look. They'll go into the toy room and just look, and they'll have like nostalgia for everything they look they like to look and just see what i have for games yeah and, oh i played that one this one by having this game room we're honoring and preserving those games like yeah. i feel like by doing what we're doing we're really honoring that we're honoring that there's value in gaming not just monetary value but there's like we have fun with it. happiness it's happiness i made this little piece of paradise yeah. In my base. If I'm having a really rough day, I have a crappy day at work or whatever, yeah. I can come down here and just sit down and read a comic in the quiet and just look around and everything just makes me happy. Yeah. Or I can sit there and play a cool game. And I think that's or why can... we have the aesthetic we have too, right? Yeah. Because it, it's enjoyable for us. We Everybody designs their game room to their aesthetic and yep. this is this is for us and we we love that other people enjoy it too oh yeah but we have to first and foremost enjoy it and and i really really do every little thing we put into the game room makes me love it, it yeah it's, more and more all the time art is an expression of how you feel yep so yeah the whole game room is basically art so that's our 10 and i would encourage other channels or other youtubers or just people in the comments yeah. if what if if there's something we haven't thought of that you said well why not this yeah put it in the comments Absolutely. do a video response please we love that yeah. thanks for watching put it in the comments what yep. do you think i hope you liked it and we'll see you next time see you later don't you guys say it game on <laughs> you had to say it like that <laughs> you are right, you say it then game on